Shalom and welcome once again to Treasures of the Torah. I'm Pastor Matt McEwen. This week our Torah portion is called Kitavo. A couple of Torah portions back, we learned of these two mountains, Mount Gerizim and Mount Ebal, and that these mountains would be a mountain of blessing and a mountain of cursing, a mountain of blessings and curses. And the people were told to choose between the blessing or the curse, to choose between life and death. Now, there is a special swearing-in ceremony that happens in this particular Torah portion, starting at verse 27, I'm sorry, chapter 27 and verse 12, and it says, The following shall stand upon Mount Gerizim to bless the people. So here's what happens, and this commentary that I'm reading from today comes from the Babylonian Talmud, Tractate Sota, page 32a. Here's what happens. It says, six tribes ascended to the top of Mount Gerizim, and six to the top of Mount Ebal. The Kohanim, the Levites, and the Ark stood below in the valley. The Levites turned their faces toward Mount Gerizim and began with the blessing. Blessed be the man who does not make a graven or molten image. And both the tribes on Mount Gerizim said to the tribes on Mount Ebal, they answered, Amen. And the Levites turned their faces toward Mount Ebal, and they began with this curse, saying, Cursed be the man who makes any graven or molten image. And both groups of tribes responded, Amen. Thus, it continued in this manner of all the blessings and curses until the very last curse, namely, verse 26, Cursed be the one who does not uphold the words of this Torah. Now, when I was younger, if I had to make a difficult decision, my parents suggested that I make a list, actually two lists. One of positive things and one of negative things. I would try to find the good that would happen if I made the decision to do a certain thing and then maybe some disadvantages of making that decision. Now if you can imagine a very long list, not of pros and cons of making a decision, but rather blessings and curses of rather following God's word or breaking God's word or the commandments in God's word. Just imagine that. What if we physically made lists? What if we physically made lists and we put them on the top of two mountains? Because that's exactly what God told them to do. What if we not only made lists and put them on tops of mountains, but what if we called out out loud every commandment in the Bible and say, blessed are you if you do this, cursed are you if you go against that. I wonder if it would sink into our memories if we had it done like this in a very dramatic way. I have to think that it would. Perhaps we should take time sometimes to imagine that the things that we want to do for the Lord are physically written down on a monument on one mountain and that the things that we're trying to avoid they'd be on the other mountain written out you know it is said that the blessings and curses were even written down in multiple languages so the people could understand them and that there were special instructions that were written down as well on how to fulfill certain commandments this is something that is, it's curious to me. I think it's always helpful for us to have an object lesson. I think it's always helpful for us to have something that we can look at, something that is tangible, that will remind us about the pros and cons, or the blessings and the curses. Why don't you consider making a list of some things that you're trying to do for the Lord, and maybe make a list of things that you're trying to avoid for the sake of the Lord. And why don't you physically say out loud, you know what, I'm going to be blessed if I do this. I, if I'm disobedient, I may start living in a curse if I do this other thing. I think it could be a real object lesson for you and a wonderful way to remember commandments of the Lord. 
I hope this has been an interesting object lesson for you. I hope this teaching has been a blessing. I pray that your Shabbat will not only be filled with rest, but uh, a resting from trying to do the right thing and trying to avoid doing the wrong thing. When it comes to Shabbat, let us just have that beautiful rest and worship that we need as a part of our week. Thank you for joining me. Shabbat Shalom.